start so let's start this chapter 7 so again this chapter's name is non current asset acquisition and depreciation okay so two things we are looking over here first is acquisition like how we are purchasing the non current assets and second is the depreciation how we are depreciating them so both things we'll discuss in very much detail so that we can easily do the questions of this topic okay now this is the whole chart uh, i'll come back to this at the end Uh, because when we then do the whole chapter then we'll discuss about this okay so over here you can see non current assets i also explained you the basic definition of the assets on the day 1 right on the first day that i gave you the demo i explained you the basic definition uh, that was close to the assets and asset has two types current assets and non current assets right but this topic is purely focused on the non current assets like the machine car all the assets which life is more than 12 months more than one year okay yeah. so these are some features that are written over here let's discuss them so they are long term in nature that means that uh, their nature is long term obviously more than 12 months right they are not normally acquired for resale right so there is one more standard accounting standard let me explain you that as well that's not included in f3 uh, syllabus but it will just help you to distinguish between them okay so it's basically ias 40 ias 40 is basically investment property it's called investment property so what this is this standard is basically for the investment property and this investment property we purchased not for the use just for capital appreciation like for example if we have some money just lying around in our bank account that is just free we want to use them so what companies do is that they purchase uh, properties or buildings or houses or you know simple land in very well populated areas very well detailed areas and they just sell them they don't use them they just sell them when the valuer increases their price whenever the market goes up okay so these non current assets are not investment property these have a separate accounting standard that is ias 16 for the inventory we studied one accounting standard which was ias 2 right this was for the inventories but for this non current assets the accounting standard is international accounting standard 16 16 okay so they could be tangible and intangible so intangible assets have one separate chapter we'll discuss that as well in the next week classes so right now our focus will be tangible only okay they are used to generate income directly or indirectly for a business this point i explained in the demo class as well that uh, assets basically generate the economic benefits how do they generate by selling the finished goods to the customers right so okay. they are not normally liquid assets not easily and quickly converted into cash without a significant loss in value obviously if we are purchasing a machine today so if we are purchasing it today and we are selling it the next day so it, it's not you know practically possible it doesn't make sense and people will also not be ready to buy because they will see that they are just selling it the next day they just bought it yesterday and they're selling it the next day right so there must be something wrong in the machine why should we buy it why should we waste our money the customers will think like this right so these are normally yeah. not liquid liquid assets means that they are easily convertible into cash but these non current assets are not those only the current assets yes those are the liquid assets like the cash receivables we can uh, you know just call the customer any time we can give the, them the deadline that pay within these days or cash itself is a liquid asset so they are converted into cash in a very quick time okay so these were the basic features let's move ahead uh, capital and revenue expenditure this i also discussed in uh, before's classes as well but let's uh, recap this as well right here so there are two kinds of expenditures that are incurred on the non current assets one is called the capital expenditure and second one is the revenue expenditure now capital expenditure i explained to you that this is basically the long term nature right so these are basically incurred for you know improving the assets life for example we had a building and that building had two floors right now we are planning to put a third floor as well and make it operational or maybe you know outsource it to any other company so you you know this is increasing the building's life it is increasing the operational capacity okay so again expenditure on acquisition of non current assets so it can be purchasing non current asset or increasing its life both things can be called capital expenditure expenditure on existing non current asset aimed at increasing their earning capacity earning capacity or life both are same things okay so these are long term in nature the business intends to receive benefits of the expenditure over a long period of time obviously more than 12 months now on the opposite side we have revenue expenditure 
revenue expenditure is the short term expense right uh, probably like those expenses i told you which are recurring expenses which happen again and again right so th these are any expenditure on the current assets expenditure relating to running the business so you know operational which happens again and again recurring right expenditure on maintaining the earning mm -hmm. capacity so over here it was increasing the earning capacity right the word was increasing yeah. and in this revenue expenditure it is maintaining basically right for example if any window or a door broke in the office or the workplace so we are repairing it so we are maintaining it applying a new door or just fixing a window does not increase its life right so that means it's just being maintained over here okay so the, this relates to current accounting period only between the 12 months so we can call it less than 12 months and is used to generate revenue in the business so again it is kind of short term and that kind of expenditure which is recurring happens again and again okay got it yeah yeah okay that's great now the next thing over here is non current registers sorry non current asset registers so what these are uh, basically uh, this is kind of a register that maintains all the details of the asset assets that are available in the company so it is basically uh, recording all these things the points that are written so non current asset registers is a record of the non current assets held by the business these form part of the internal control system of an organization so you have heard many companies uh, like all of the companies have a legal requirement of audit right so they are making financial statements first right the accountant makes it and after that every year at the end of 12 months they are being audited as well this you will study in detail in paper f8 of acc in the exam f8 this is called the audit and assurance exam so what happens is that the financial statements once they are prepared they are checked by individual independent persons who are not linked with the company they don't know the company okay so for them this is very important to just you know check that whether the asset actually exists in the company or not so register is just like on one side i am writing it on a computer system or a piece of paper and on one side i am maintaining it physically so they both should be equal okay on the register as well and physically as well so we need to update their information regularly so these include all the information you can see cost date of purchase description of the asset the location where is it located if we want to find it right now right in factory a factory b which building which room right depreciation method we are going to study this as well and expected useful life how much is the useful life of that machine okay so all of the details of the assets whichever detail is possible is written in the register as well just to maintain the existence of the asset okay got it yeah okay that's great now we're moving to the main part which was the first part of this uh, uh, this chapter which is acquisition like how do we purchase a non current asset okay so a non current asset register is maintained in order to uh, control non current assets and keep track of what is owned and where it is kept so basically it helps in reconciliation between physical assets and the assets on the paper that we're writing so it is periodically reconciled to the non current asset accounts maintained in the general ledger so obviously there are t accounts as well that are maintained so all these hmm. things are basically uh, reconciled with each other okay yeah. the cost of a non current asset is any amount incurred to acquire the asset and bring it to its working condition now this brings me to two points over here okay let's discuss one thing just a second so like we studied in the inventory chapter that what does the cost include in the inventory same concept is over here that what does assets cost include okay so cost of asset is calculated by these th two points over here okay so this is point 1 and this is point 2 so first point is any expense incurred in bringing asset to its present location okay so the first keyword over here is present location these can be many things like you know delivery costs let me write examples over here delivery costs because if we don't pay delivery cost the machine will not be able to be transported to our factory right so delivery cost if you are purchasing the machine from abroad then there are some custom taxes 
right? Import duties, all of these things are included in the present location. Okay, so we need yeah. to include this cost in the capital expenditure of the asset. We need to basically capitalize it. Okay, and what is the second thing? Any expense, <clears throat> any expense incurred in bringing asset to its working condition. Okay, so the only point that is written in the study text is this working condition, right? But you need to understand this present location as well, because I don't think this is written anywhere in the study text. And this will help you in the exam. And we'll do some questions about this as well, like what things to include and what not to include. Okay, so now coming to the working condition, any kind of, you know, uh, we can call any tests, whenever a machine is newly installed, we do some tests, right? like a fire test, like an emergency test, what happens like this, what happens like that. So any kind of experimental test, we will include these tests into the asset cost as well. Uh, then for example, uh, any kind of alterations to the business structure, right? So alteration basically means like we have to uh, call some people to, you know, destroy some area or make some place for the factory so that the machine can be fitted into that. Okay, just, you know, make some kind of a structure or extra, you know, reinforcement to the factory so that it can be, you know, well maintained inside the factory. So all of these kinds, because if we don't do that alteration, if we just leave the machine like that, we don't secure it with, you know, screws and all that. So obviously it will move around and it will have bad effect on the efficiency of that. Right. And it will not come into working condition if we don't secure it in a well way. Right. So these all things are important. These two things are important and these will be included in the assets cost okay got it yes all right great now let's discuss this as well because this is explaining further same thing so asset cost includes these all things capital expenditure such as purchase price itself we know this right like if we are purchasing an asset obviously the purchase price will be included then the delivery yeah. cost again this answers the first question this question you see present location so delivery cost, legal fee, obviously we might have to pay some uh, agent if we are importing the machine from another country or another place, right? So we might have to pay a custom clearing agent or many kind of legal fee. Maybe the machine is not allowed by the government over there, right? Then subsequent yeah. expenditure, which enhances the asset. So maybe we are purchasing a car, right? And we are installing a new engine in it, right? So it is increasing the life of the asset, right? So again, what is it? It is a capital expense. So naturally it will be included in the asset cost. Then obviously all kind of trials and tests that I've discussed in this, which is working condition. This yeah. will be important in bringing it to its working condition. Okay. And it include all the excludes all the expenses, which are the revenue expenditure, the expenses, which are, you know, incurred again and again. So repairs, renewals, repainting, administration, right? So repairs may be happening, you know, each month or each six months. So it is a recurring expense, right? Renewals of licenses, all these things, general overheads, training cost as well. This is very important. Many students do this mistake that they uh, basically capitalize the training cost, which is wrong. This is actually a revenue expense because let me give, the, give you the logic. If a new update of a machine has come by the manufacturer, we have to train the employees. And now, for example, after one month or just after two weeks, another update is there. So now we have to again train the employees, right? So it is again a recurring expense. It is happening again and again. So it is a revenue expense, not a capital expense. Okay. Okay. Now the double entry for purchasing the asset, it's very simple. We have, we have discussed it before as well. So it's debit non-current asset because again, asset increases on debit side. Right. And mm -hmm. credit, we do bank, bank or cash. Just ignore this payable. Payable can be also credit, but it's very rare situation because whenever we purchase a non-current asset on credit, like we pay afterwards, after one month, two months, then it is a payable. Right. But normally it will be paid by either bank or either by cash. Okay. All right. Now separate cost account should be kept for each category of non-current asset. So that means each non-current asset will have a separate T account. Like car will have a separate one. Uh, for example, machine will have a separate one. Land will have a separate one. Okay. So everything will be separately calculated. 
Now subsequent expenditure, this is basically like now we have purchased the asset. Now what happens after that? What next, right? So subsequent cost on the non-current asset can only be recorded as a part of cost or capitalized if it enhances the benefit of the asset. So again, the debate comes about the capital and revenue expense. If it is a capital expense being incurred after the asset is purchased, yes, it will be uh, added in the asset cost. But if it is a revenue expense, then we will exclude it. We'll add it as a simple expense in the statement of profit or loss. Okay. Oh, sorry. Then, I have understood uh, this. Sorry. Sorry. Could you please repeat? Yeah, yeah. I can repeat. So basically what's happening is we, we are looking at the subsequent cost. Okay. So subsequent cost is like, for example, today I've purchased a new machine, right? Now what happens next? For example, tomorrow or day after tomorrow or next week or next month or next year, if I need to uh, incur some extra expenditure on that machine. So what happens uh, for that, right? So again, there is the same debate about capital versus revenue expenditure. The thing, the same thing that we studied above. If it is a capital expenditure, then we straight away include it in the assets cost, right? And if it is a revenue expenditure, we expense it out simply in the statement of profit or loss because this will not be included. Right. Remember the things we over here. So the same thing we're doing over here. Okay. Now an example for this will be, which meets the criteria. So can be capitalized is extension to a shop building. This, I gave you an example, like for example, uh, we have a two floor building. We are planning to build a third floor as well, right? A covered third floor so that we can outsource it and use it in a good manner for generating uh, revenue for the company. So this, extra floor that we are uh, building, this will be a capital expenditure, not a revenue because this only happens once in a year, once in five years, right? This is not a recurring expense. Mm -hmm. All right. So this is the debate over here, capital versus revenue expenditure. And similarly, an example of subsequent expenditure, which does not meet this criteria. That means if it is a revenue expenditure is any kind of repair cost, right? So basically repair costs are happening again and again, like every month, every two months, every week. Okay. So this was the information over here. I hope you got it. Mm -hmm. Now we'll do uh, exactly the qu kit questions when we'll move to the exam kit. These questions are same to the exam kit. So it doesn't matter if we do this or that. It will be the same thing. Okay. Now let's move to the second part, which is depreciation, right? We have done the first part of this uh, chapter, which was acquisition, how we purchase, what should we include in the cost of asset, uh, working condition, present location, all of these things, capital versus revenue expenditure. Yeah. Now we're discussing the second part, which is depreciation. Okay. Now depreciation is also very easy to understand. So what happens is, let me give you a small brief of this uh, topic. So what happens is that when we purchase a machine, when we start using it from today, for example, then as we use the machine, as the time passes away, uh, its efficiency also decreases, right? Like for example, if I purchased a machine 10 years ago, and if I look at it today, so 10 years have passed in between, right? It is working at full capacity, 100% capacity in all these 10 years. Now today, the machine will not be same as it was on day one, right? It will have some kind of, you know, we might have maintained uh, maintenance expenses we might have given we might have changed something in the machine. So it, it will not be in its original form and it will not have such good capacity or efficiency like it was in the day one, right? So the same concept is here in depreciation. Depreciation basically in English means reduce, reducing the value, reduction in the value over time, okay? But in IES 16 in financial accounting, depreciation means the systematic allocation of depreciable amount of an asset over its useful life. So what we're doing is that we are just spreading the assets cost over its useful life. This is the easiest meaning of this so that we can account for the wear and tear that the machine is going through. Okay. Yeah. So this is the meaning of depreciation. Now we'll discuss two methods. There are two methods of depreciation. I'll come back to it in just a, in just a minute. Now, second is in simple terms, depreciation spreads the cost of asset over the period in which it will be used. So the same thing that I explained, right? Now depreciation matches the cost of using a non-current asset to the revenues generated by that asset over its useful life. So obviously there is one concept. Let me explain it to you as well over here. Like we studied a concept known as 
duality concept right i am explaining you one more concept which is matching principle right so matching principle is basically telling it's a very simple concept very simple principle it is basically telling us that uh, whenever we are recording a revenue for one thing for example this 6000 is the revenue of a one machine it has brought a sales of worth six thousand dollars right so whenever we are recording a revenue we should record the cost of that same period as well so for example obviously every nothing is free in this world right everything that we are making it has a cost it will generate us revenue but it still has some costs right so matching principle is same that we have to uh, you know study over here that any kind of revenue that we're recording will be matched to the same period cost that is incurring now for example if i made $6000 in revenue i might have incurred you know let's say $2000 in cost right so what is the net profit it is 4000 this is my profit yeah. okay so simply remember just matching principle tells us that whatever revenue we are earning the same period cost should also be allocated to the same revenue that we earned in the same period okay so this is the meaning of matching principle we'll discuss it in the separate chapter as well because this has a separate chapter uh, i think it's uh, towards the middle of the syllabus so it's the same meaning in this third statement depreciation must also be matched to the pattern of use of the asset according to is 16 estimated useful life of items of property plant equipment must regularly review and may be changed if the method is no longer matching uh, matches the use of the asset so obviously we need to review it regularly as well if the useful life has changed or the value of the asset has increased or decreased we need to keep a check on that as well and we need to adjust it right away whenever this change happens okay this is achieved by recording a depreciation charge each year right so basically it has again a dual effect first of all depreciation charge is an expense obviously because it's a loss for the company right so it's first an expense and secondly it is recorded in the financial position it reduces the non-current asset amount okay and there's one more word over here it is called accumulated depreciation so the only difference between depreciation expense and accumulated depreciation is that you see over here the word accumulated accumulated means the total of the depreciation so it's very simple to understand each year we're charging depreciation like let's say 2000 we're charging each year so 2000 2000 and 2000 so we charged it for three years for example now what will be the accumulated depreciation the total of these three right so what will be the total 6000 so this is the simple meaning of accumulated depreciation so this 2000 is the per year expense of each year right and this 6000 is the total amount right so what will be the double entry for this uh, depreciation let me tell you over here the double entry is it's written below as well but let's discuss over here as well so it's debit depreciation expense and credit accumulated depreciation because always remember this accumulated depreciation is a group two item so it increases on credit always remember it's just treated like capital like liability like sales right all these things sorry, are increasing sorry, no, I, didn't, I didn't understand sorry so you debit depreciation because it's an expense okay yeah, yeah exactly in charge and why do you create the accumulated depreciation look basically accumulated depreciation is there we just need to understand the word of this right accumulated yeah. means that we are just you know adding up all the depreciation that that is charged to the whole years of the machine that is used right so that means I gave you an example over here, 2000 we are charging each year, right? So this 2000 firstly will go into each year's expense, right? And this mm -hmm. total 6000, we have charged total depreciation of 6000, right? This will be called the accumulated depreciation, this 6000, mm -hmm. right? So what basically we're doing is, we are just studying the double entry for this depreciation. So first of all, it is an expense. And secondly, it is recorded as a total. So we are also maintaining accumulated account as well. And we are also maintaining the separate expense account as well. Okay. So what will be the entry? It will be 2000 and 2000. And next year it will be, it will be same as well. After three years, the accumulated depreciation will give us the 6000 balance basically. Okay. So this is the meaning of this. Oh, is it, 
sorry, so the accumulated depreciation is like it's like a, li a liability. It will be treated as a liability, but it's not actually a liability. Okay, it's just treated as a group two item. That means it increases on credit. Let me write over here. So accumulated depreciation on debit, it's a decrease on credit, it's an increase. Okay, it's actually not a liability, but it's treated as a group two item. Okay, and again, uh, this accumulated Sorry, depreciation. If, if, it, if it is increasing, it shouldn't be like a debit. You remember the group two items I told you on the day one. Group two items were debit for decrease, credit for increase. Oh yeah, yeah, that's true. right. So for the credit, it's being increased, and for debit, it's being decreased. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so the same thing. What we're doing again? This accumulated depreciation is just there for making the accountant's task easier, so that he does not have to look at each year's statement of profit or loss for calculating the total depreciation. Right. So it's just over there make the task easier because there are a lot of assets in the company so that the total figure can be calculated in a very easy manner okay so this this does not have any implications on the financial statements it's just for making the work easier okay okay right so this is the further depreciation discussion this you can read yourself we have discussed it in a very uh, detailed manner this is basically just you know general knowledge just common sense like you know depreciation may arise from use physical wear and tear these are just the reasons for depreciation these are not not asked in the exam but just you can use it uh, you can read it for just your general knowledge just common sense okay so now let's come to the methods of the depreciation uh, there are two methods that i was talking about in the start first method is straight line second method is reducing balance Okay, so in the whole world, there are two methods of charging depreciation, straight line and reducing balance. Now, always remember, straight line depreciation is same in the each year. Why is it same? Because it is charged on the cost. Mm -hmm. Let me write over here, charged on cost. So cost is calculated one time, right? Cost does not change each year or uh, something like that, right? So the reason it is same in each year is that we just calculate it once and it's used in every year. So that is basically the meaning of this word straight line. Straight line basically means we just add depreciation in a straight line and it's the same figure each year. Okay. And it as that the benefit is consumed evenly. So obviously it is equal each year. That's why it is assuming that it is evenly distributing the effect. Okay, so it's useful for assets which provide equal benefit each year. Uh, this is, I, I think this is not relevant. It will ask you in the question, it will show you clearly which method they're using. Either it's reducing balance or either it's straight line. Okay, so always remember this will be charged on cost, but what about reducing balance? Always remember this is charged on carrying value. I'll explain you what this carrying value means in just a minute. So a reducing amount of depreciation is charged each year. So assumes that more benefit is consumed in earlier years. So this is the harder form of this. This is very difficult to understand, but easier form you can just remember it as it is charged on carrying value, right? And the name over here, reducing balance, it is telling us that the balance reduces each year. Depreciation will not be the same. It's not straight line, right? In reducing balance, it will keep on reducing each year. We'll do one example as well, and you'll understand in that. Okay. Now let me explain you carrying value, what this means. Okay. Just a second. So carrying value. Now in other words, it is also called net book value, NBV. But mostly the word nowadays it's used carrying value. Okay, so carrying value has a very simple formula that we can easily understand. It is basically cost minus accumulated depreciation. Okay, so in easier words, if I explain it in a short phrase, carrying value is basically the amount of the asset, basically the value of the asset, which is existing at today's date. Okay, let me write over here as well. The value of asset. that is available at today's 
date okay so again you can also understand it with the word carrying basically means we are just carrying the asset right because if we are using the asset from the last 10 years and we still use it for the next 10 years as well let's assume the useful life was 20 years right so 10 years have already passed and we are planning to use it for 10 more years because 10 more years are remaining right in its life so carrying value means we are just carrying the asset you know like we uh, we push something on the road right we pull something so we are pulling the asset each year each year in the financial statement so it is the most easiest way to learn this right so this is carrying value this is cost minus accumulated depreciation why we are mining minusing depreciation is because uh, depreciation basically removes the effect of wear and tear right it gives us the actual figure let's assume if we purchased the asset for 50000 10 years ago and till now the total depreciation that is charged it is 20000 so that means asset is basically finished of 20000 value out of the 50000 so that means how much value is it today it is 30000 okay so right now if i talk about the asset it will be shown in the financial statements at 30000 each year they are showed at the carrying value okay not the cost all right okay, so this is 30000 basically exactly exactly its carrying value is 30000 okay okay we'll do the questions as well and then you'll be further clear about this now um, first of all let's see uh, let's read this thing first ia 16 says that depreciation method applied to an asset should reflect the pattern in which the asset future economic benefits are expected to be consumed okay so this basically again means that we should charge the depreciation method only that method we should charge which relates to the asset more okay but this uh, statement is basically more relevant for the next papers for f7 and sbr level okay it will not be tested at this level because it's a very advanced statement. okay so first let's do this method first of all the straight line method and straight line method was the first method of depreciation it has a very easy formula okay always remember depreciation will be calculated using this formula okay and what is the formula cost minus residual value divided by useful life okay now let me explain you with logic what we are doing so first of all we are removing the residual value why we are removing because residual value is the value that we'll still get when we so sell the asset after 10 years okay let's say for example if i purchased an asset which cost 50000 right and i purchased it in 2020 in the year 2020 and i plan to use it for 10 years okay mm -hmm. now uh, i estimated with my research that after 10 years after using it in 2030 it will be sold out for let's say 5000 $5000 right so that means out of 50000 i am assured that i'm still getting 5000 out of it right this is a surety so that means this surety we will remove from this formula so that's why we are reducing the residual value from the cost so actually what we're doing we're just calculating on 45000 effectively because only this 45000 will be wear and tear throughout these 10 years right this 5000 this will not be affected only this 45000 will be affected because 5000 yeah, okay. there's the surety will still get it right so it's not depreciating only 45000 will depreciate and we divide this whole amount by the useful life so for example 45000 divided by 10 years okay so the per year depreciation over here will be 4500 so this is straight line method and again remember i told you above this will be same in every year first of all it will be charged on cost secondly it will remain each year it will remain same so this 4500 will charge each year in a same manner okay, okay just give me a second one second okay so this i have also explained to you that residual value is the estimated disposal value of the asset at end of useful life that means that how much the asset will still be sold out for after using it for 10 years okay and useful life will be given to you in the question that how much do we expect to use it over its whole life 
okay so straight line method results in the same charge every year and it is used wherever pattern of usage of asset is consistent throughout its life so that means it's not like we'll uh, use asset for one year and we'll just put it to rest for three years then on the fourth year we'll open it then three years it will be break we'll not use straight line method in such kind of scenario okay so the again the word over here is that pattern of usage should be consistent throughout its life okay so here is the main thing of the straight line method buildings are commonly depreciated using this method because obviously they are to be used each year they are not usually free right operation is going on on them either day either yeah. night okay so this was straight line method now let's discuss this reducing variance method which is the second method okay now straight line method remember first feature is there are two main feature in straight line first feature was it was charge and cost second main feature was it was remaining same in each year that's why it was named straight line now second thing reducing balance reducing balance is basically the depreciation balance is reducing each year right so it's a very easy formula it's nothing uh, to you know learn about here we just multiply the carrying amount with the percentage that is given in the question okay so let's say the question says that asset is depreciated 15% using reducing balance okay so always remember this is charged on carrying value so that's why reducing balance will give us a less amount each year that's why the balance will reduce each year okay the reducing balance method results in constantly reducing depreciation charged throughout the life yes that's correct and this is used to reflect the expectation that asset is used less and less as it ages so this is basically a more realistic approach straight line assumes that it, it is same right in actual it can never be same so hmm. asset uh, use basically reduces over time because naturally its efficiency goes down right this is a common method of depreciation for vehicles obviously vehicles efficiency is goes down right for example you might know if it is giving a mileage of let's say uh, 15 kilometers per liter right on the first day that we purchased after 10 years in the worst case scenario after 10 years it might give a mileage of let's say 5 kilometers per liter so that means reducing balance method will be very uh, appropriate for this kind of car because the use is reducing each year okay now asset bought or sold in the period this is a very simple thing if non current asset is bought or sold in the same period there are two ways in which depreciation could be accounted for so first of all provide a full es depreciation in the year of acquisition and none in the year of disposal so these you don't need to worry about these kind of statements will be given to you in the question we are also going to do this illustration that is over here just for an example so these kind of statements will be given to you that even if he charges full year depreciation in disposal or no depreciation in the disposal year so all these details will be given to you in the question so let's see this first question then we'll move towards the exam kit questions okay now dave a trader purchased an item of plant for 1000 on 1st august 2011 so in all kind of depreciation questions this date is very important to understand just a second okay so which method is he using which he depreciates on reducing balance at 20% per annum so which method is he using he is redu using the reducing balance so that means this will be charged on the carrying value not the cost okay now what is the depreciation charge for each of the first 5 years if the accounting year end is 31st july okay so that means that he purchased it on 1st august 2011 1 august 11 and he is using it for 5 years right so that's mm -hmm. that means that he'll sell it august 12 august 13 august 14 august 15 and he'll sell it on 1st august 16 so these are the five years right now let's look at the solution it's very simple what we have to do is this is the difficult uh, format to follow i'm telling you the easier format over here okay yeah. first you write the cost and yeah. first august 2011 over here the date then we write cost right and he purchased it for 1000 right let's see over here yes 1000 and method is reducing balance 
at twenty uh, percent. Reducing balance at twenty percent. Now we're using it for five years. Let's write the useful life as well so that we remember. Okay. Now first depreciation will be charged for the first year, and this will be basically one thousand into twenty percent. Okay, we, because we just have to multiply it with the percentage. There is no residual value, no useful life, because this is reducing balance method. So this gives us two hundred. So first year's depreciation is two hundred, and what we are left is when we are minus these two amounts, eight hundred will be our carrying value. So the same thing that I explained to you above, cost. The same time the depreciation is getting minus from the cost, right? Over time, uh, this is called carrying value. So this carrying value is after one year. So this is 2012. So if we look at 1st August 2012, if we are standing currently at 1st August 2012, our assets value in the financial statements is $800. Yeah. Now let's continue to do it till five years. This is the first year. Now I'm doing the second year. So sorry, not 200. Now this is reducing balance, right? So reducing balance said that we have to calculate depreciation on carrying value. So now, what is the carrying value? Eight hundred. So now, eight hundred multiplied by twenty percent will do. So this will be one sixty. So you see, the depreciation is reducing each year, and this is the exact meaning of reducing balance. So now, carrying value at first August twenty thirteen will be, I think, six uh, forty. Let's check it as well. Just a second. Yes, it's six forty. Okay, now further two years are done. The third year. Now I'll calculate this uh, the third depreciation on six forty, not on eight hundred, not on one thousand, on six forty because we have to charge it on carrying value. So twenty percent. Let's see. So six forty into twenty percent. So it's one twenty eight. So one twenty eight. Just a second. So this is five one two, and this is the carrying value at first August two thousand fourteen. Okay, and now the fourth year's depreciation. So one two three, and this is fourth, right? Now I'll charge it on five one two because we have to charge it on carrying value. So five one two into twenty percent. This is one zero two point four. So one zero two point four. And this will give us the carrying value at August fifteen. So this will be four zero nine point six. Okay, and let's do the last year as well over here. So depreciation. Now we'll charge it on four zero nine point six into twenty percent. So four zero nine point six into twenty percent. This is eighty one point. It's nine two, but just let's make it eighty one point nine. Okay, so eighty one point nine, and this will be our final carrying value at first August twenty sixteen, and four zero nine point six minus eighty one point nine. So this is three twenty seven point seven. Okay, and this is the final carrying value at the end of five years. Now let's see in the answer. This will be the same answer, right? So this over here, uh, what did it ask in the question? Oh, it's basically asking the depreciation charge, right, for the year. So this is the each year depreciation charge: two hundred, one sixty, one twenty-eight, one zero two point four, and eighty-one point nine. Okay. If it ask in the question the final carrying value, then this would be the answer: three twenty-seven point seven. Okay. So he has calculated the whole depreciation Sorry, and the and total. How, how does it Yeah, how how does he calculate the accumulated depreciation? So basically, you see, he's uh, adding up each year's depreciation, and it's increasing the value of accumulated. Because accumulated means it's together, right? The each year's depreciation is being added in this. So this is the each year's charge, these ones, and this is the accumulated. This keeps on increasing each year, right? Because it's kind of a reserve that is kept. So it's the same two hundred one sixty one twenty eight. You can see. Two hundred one sixty one twenty eight. Then it's one or two because it's one or two point four. The same thing. It has just rounded off. So one or two, and then eighty two, right? Over here, you can see eighty two. 
So the total for this will be okay, six. Okay, so you have just to add them when you want to see the accumulated depreciation. Basically. Yes, exactly, exactly. We just have to add them because accumulated depreciation means the total depreciation that is charged till date right now. Okay, yeah. on the asset. Okay. Right now, let's see next what we have next. So this is the same uh, depreciation double entry that we discussed above. So debit depreciation expense. So IES is basically the income statement because obviously all expenses are written in income statement, right? And credit we do accumulated depreciation because accumulated is from the asset value. So yeah. these are the two double entries over here. So depreciation expense account is a profit or loss. Obviously, it's not accumulated because it's the expense. And the accumulated depreciation is written in statement of financial position. As the name suggests, it is accumulated. That means reflects all depreciation to date. This is the meaning of accumulated. It reflects okay. all depreciation till date. Okay. And this carrying amount, I've also explained to you. If we minus the depreciation from the cost, we get the answer of carrying value, carrying amount. Mm -hmm. Okay. We'll straight away then jump to the questions of exam kit. Let's see if there are any other things. Yes, there is one thing. The changing estimates. This is the last thing. Let's see. Uh, businesses should apply the same rates and methods of depreciation consistently throughout their life of business. However, if they believe that their estimates of useful life or residual value are inappropriate, they are permitted to change them with no further recourse. So that means again, the same thing. We discussed it above as well that if the company thinks that the life is changing or the asset use is changing, right? So they can adjust it beforehand so that there is no further damage. Because if we continue to use it on the old uh, old things without making any change, then it is very destroying for the company, very dangerous for the company, okay? So we should uh, consider changing and reviewing the details each year or on a very frequent basis. In order to do this, you simply work out the new depreciation charge of asset based on the revised estimate of useful life or residual value. So this is not probably coming in the, coming in the exam. This is just for the common sense that whenever we feel there is a change, we just change the life or the residual value, anything or the cost whenever we feel like it. Okay. This is just a thing related to the disclosures. Disclosure is basically, I told you yesterday, it's a basic uh, indirect communication with the shareholders. Right, so we have finished the chapter. Uh, that's very nice. Now let's straight away jump to the exam kit questions. We'll do some of them, right? And remaining questions I'll give you as a homework for them to complete, okay? So these are the questions. Triple one till 140, just a second. So these total questions include the second part as well. That is the revaluation and disposal that we'll study tomorrow, hopefully. So those questions we will not do right now because we have not studied the chapter, obviously. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's start with the depreciation questions first because the other ones relate to the second topic. Okay. So it's starting from here. Question 113. All right, so which of the following statements is true in relation to non-current asset register? So we studied non-current asset register. It contains all the uh, details about the asset, right? So option A is, it is an alternative, alternative name for the non-current asset ledger account. No, this is actually wrong because uh, ledger account is basically the T account, right? So T account can never replace the non-current asset register. Register is separate, T accounts are separate, and physical assets are separate. So these three are separate things. Okay. So this one is wrong. Now it is a list of the physical non-current assets rather than their financial cost. This is also a very vague statement. Let's read all of them. It is a schedule of planned maintenance of non-current assets for use by the plant engineer. This is also very vague. Let's read option D as well. It is a schedule of the cost and other information about each individual non-current asset. Yes. This statement is the best suitable to this non-grant asset register. And this is the same thing that we studied, right? So that means option D is the correct option over here. 
okay now next uh, do the next question question 114 so what should be the charge for depreciation in c company statement of profit and loss for the year ended 31st december 16 so what is it asking in the requirement it's asking the charge for depreciation right now can you please tell me which method they are using in this can you please locate in the question which method they are using of depreciation uh straight line depreciation is there exactly exactly it's written over here right so straight line yeah. depreciation now the thing over here the twist over here is that it's 20% per year but in the formula we studied that the formula for straight line is cost minus residual value divided by useful life right so basically whenever there is a percentage we need to work according to the data that is given okay so because there is a percentage given on this so that's why we'll use the percentage for calculation but remember the rules and principles will remain same each year depreciation will be same okay this percentage does not mean that this will change into reducing balance it is still straight line right so it will be charged on cost and secondly it will remain same each year now what does this pro rata basis mean this pro rata basis means that if we purchase the asset in mid of one year right for example we just use it for 6 months in one year right so that means we'll just charge the depreciation for 6 months not for the whole year so we'll just do the answer multiplied by 6 by 12 because depreciation gives us the whole year answer right so we just multiply it with the months that we have used this is the meaning of pro rata basis okay now let's see so you can see this is the cost account this is the uh, basic uh, account t account of the non current assets this is the balance brought forward that means these are the assets that are coming from behind okay and these are the cash assets that we purchased in this year because mm -hmm. the increase in assets is written over here decrease is written over here so 48000 we purchased additional assets now 84000 of assets we disposed of on which date 30th september okay now the year end is 31st december right so that means it will start from 1st jan and end it at 31st december okay now we need to keep the dates in mind because they are very important okay and this Sorry, is why why did we start at 1st january because we end at 31st december right and the year is for 12 months okay that's fine right so this will start at 1st january 16 yeah now we have to calculate the depreciation charge for just one year okay for just this current year that i wrote the timeline over here now uh, first of all we need to work in steps over here okay it's very important to understand it as steps so first you see 960000 960000 these are the assets that are the balance brought forward that are brought from behind right so mm -hmm. this means that out of this 960000 Forty-eight thousand are the newly purchased ones, right? Yeah. So what we do is that first we charge the nine sixty thousand assets in the full manner. Okay. But what we do before is that you see these eighty-four thousand assets, right? We have to keep in mind these as well because these we disposed of, right? Now first let's calculate nine sixty thousand. So nine sixty thousand into what is the percentage? Twenty twenty percent. so there is no proration over here that means this is the whole year because these were balance brought forward right so let's calculate mm -hmm. the balance just a second so this is 192000 this is the first depreciation right now we purchased 48000 additional assets as well okay now which date did we purchase at 1st july right and the year is ending at 31st december so that means we just use them for 6 months so july august september october november and december just 6 months that we used we did not use them for the whole year right so what we do is 48000 into 20% into 6 by 12 so this is the meaning of proration so 48000 into 20% into 6 by 12 so this is giving us the answer of 4800 okay now only the last thing is left which is these disposals now you see 
disposals we have disposed of at 30th September, right? That means we were using it since 1st January and we disposed them in mid of the year at 30th September. So how much time did we use it for the whole year? So January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September. So that means only nine months out of the 12 months we used, right? So yeah. what we do is 84,000 into 20% into nine by 12 because we only use it for nine months so eighty four thousand into 20 percent into nine by 12 so these depreciations will be minus from this okay so what we do is 192,000 let me write over here 192,000 plus 4800 right and minus 12,600 just give me a second. Why, why minus 12,600? Uh, because you see the disposals we are making, we are uh, basically disposing of, right? Yeah. Just a minute, just a minute. So 960 and 48. Oh, sorry. These will be added, not plus. Yes, exactly. So these will be added. So 192 plus 4,800 plus 12,600. So just give me a second. Just let me check the answer. Okay, just a second. We did a small minor mistake in this. Let's correct that. So it was 114, right? Okay, so the mistake that we did over here is that you see this uh, 960,000, right? So what we're doing is that we actually needed to minus 84,000 over here as well. Okay, why we are minusing 84,000? Because these 84,000 were not used for the whole year. And obviously we are calculating these as separately as well. So these 84,000 are basically included in this 960,000, right? So we are just minusing the 84,000 so that the effect is removed from this. Okay. Now the answer will be correct. So let's do this. So 960 minus 84. So in 2.2, right? So this is 175, 200. The rest are correct 175 200 and if we add these all so this gives us the answer of 192 600 okay and this is the correct depreciation charge that we're doing for the whole year so we just divided it into steps so that it is easier to understand Okay, first of all, we remove this 84,000 effect from this 960,000 because this does not include, uh, this basically includes the amount of 84,000, this 960,000. So we are just removing this because we are doing a separate calculation for 84,000. Okay, and the remaining we calculated in the same way according to the months we use the asset. Okay, so according to the useful life and the months that we used, we depreciated them accordingly. Yeah. Okay, now let's do this question 115. So this question is relating to that uh, capital and revenue expenditure that we studied. Okay.
Okay, sorry. Uh, let's continue. So on first January twenty seventeen, Z company purchased an item of plant. So again, you remember the two things that we studied. First was any kind of cost incurred on asset in bringing it to its present location, right? Any kind of delivery, anything. And second was any kind of uh, cost bringing it to its working condition, right? So forty eight thousand is the purchase cost. We'll include this, right? Now delivery to factory. Yes, this is also included because this answers the first question, which was basically um, any kind of uh, cost incurred in bringing to its present location, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. Okay, so this uh, last one that I was telling you, one year warranty covering the breakdown. Okay, so this eight hundred dollar warranty breakdown is a revenue expenditure. It is just a second. So this $800 warranty will not be included in the capital expense because it is a revenue expense. Sorry, I had to take a pause because I had to take some water. Uh, I was getting some cough. Yeah, don't worry, that's fine. Okay, so 48,000 and 4,400 will be included, right? There is a small note as well written over here. Modification to the factory building costing 2,200 were necessary to enable the plant to be installed. So this is answering the second question. This was the second question. Remember, working condition. We have to alter the factory as well <clears throat> to make it working, right? So 48,000 plus 400 plus 2200. So we will add these all. Let's see what is the answer. So I think this will be 50,600. Yeah. Okay, so this <laughs> will be the whole amount that should be capitalized right only $800 is the revenue expense that is not to be covered uh, in the capital expense okay yeah. so I think the remaining questions I'll give you as a homework and it is uh, a bit difficult for me to talk more in the class because already one hour has passed right so we'll probably continue tomorrow and do the second topic right and I hope you find it uh, useful and I hope you'll revise all the things <clears throat>